Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are here for the first time. My name is Katarina, I am so glad to have you here and I hope you find this video helpful. Today I am very excited because I'm going to talk about one of my favorite brands which is Elf Cosmetics. One of my subscribers asked me a while back to do my favorite Elf product video and I'm sorry this took so long, but finally I'm today here with my video, so I'm not only going to talk about my favorite products, I'm going to talk about all of my e.l.f. products. So I will also include just a couple of products I don't have anymore, maybe they were so bad that <laughs> I really want to recommend you to stay away from them, but mostly I'm going to talk about stuff I do still have. I'm going to review the products in the order where I would put them to my face and timestamps are down below if you do want to skip some parts. First I just want to give you a little bit info of e.l.f. brand. I'm sure many of you know already a lot about e.l.f. and the brand doesn't need that much introduction, but I just wanted to mention that it is a cruelty-free brand and they are Logical Harmony approved and everything they have is also vegan. Lately, in the couple of last years, they have expanded their brand very much. They do have now skincare. I haven't tried any of those. They have different lines. Most of my stuff is from their studio line. I don't know if it's any more called studio, but it is this black packaging. So Elf is very affordable brand. It is a drugstore brand. In Finland I think you can get it from certain online stores and from some pharmacies maybe, but I really don't recommend you to buy this from Finland because it is so overpriced. For example, their matte for matte eyeshadow palette is $10 eyeshadow palette and in euros it is about 8 euros and 50 cents. In one Finnish online stores it is sold at 29.95 euros. So basically it is 30 euros. Is it worth that much? No way. But is it worth the $10? Yes, it is in my opinion. In my opinion makeup is never, never ever worth paying multiple times the original price. That's why I do order my e.l.f. products from two online stores from the United States that do both ship straight to Finland. So I do order my e.l.f. stuff from iHerb and Beauty Joint. I can link the sites below but they are not affiliate links or anything, they are just that you can check the e.l.f. selection from those sites. Let's get into this. As I said, I haven't tried anything from their skincare line, but the only product from them that I have tried and can be considered as skincare is their makeup remover cleansing clothes. I really like these makeup remover wipes, I buy them all the time. I do not take makeup off with these, but I do take off swatches and other makeup mess I may have in my hands when I'm doing my makeup. I like every day before doing makeup, do some swatching here and you know, see how would this lip color go with this eyeshadow. That's what I do every day and I like to take it off with this. So there is 20 wipes, they are very moisturized. Then I do have here just a couple of their brushes. But before into getting these brushes, I want to share my worst health product experience with you. So I did order their Stipple Travel Set, I believe it is called. I will put the picture to the screen. I ordered it because of small stipple brush. Emily Noel loves that brush. A lot of the e.l.f. products I try, I try because Emily likes them. Some of product preferences between her and myself are a little bit different, but overall I do really much trust her, I love her. So she likes the small stipple brush for cream blushes and I think that was all right. The bigger stipple brush for face didn't pick up any product at all. Then there was in this set two eyeshadow stipple brushes, so the first one was like blending brush. I think that kind of brush could work, but it was just the length difference between the shorter and the longer bristles was too much, it was just very weird. Then in this set was this flat eyeshadow stipple brush, and it's honestly the most stupid brush I have ever seen. When you think about stipple brushes, they are meant to be used with sheer application. And when you think about flat eyeshadow brush, 
They are meant to be used to pack the color to lid. So how could this work? Well, it didn't work. Um, it didn't pick up any color. So that set was just flop for me and it was quite expensive too. The small stipple brush was alright, but I really, if you do like green plush, just get the small stipple brush. But now let's get into these brushes. So I do have here four. I do have here their blush brush. I think this is very weird to be used with blush, but I love to use this brush for applying under eye setting powder. So I set my under eyes with this and also my eyeshadow primer. It is the perfect size and it is very soft. All of these brushes I'm going to talk about are the same soft black bristles. And they are all synthetic, of course. Then I have here the mineral powder brush. This was that kind of brush that I thought first that, oh my god, I don't know what to do with this. It is fluffy, but it, it is a little bit like dense same time. I have a hard time to explain, but because of the shape of this, I like just to dip this to contour product and then go in here and this blends it so beautifully. I love this to contour, but I only contour with this my cheekbone area and also my double chin. Then I do have here the, this is so weird, angled contour brush. So this is a very very weird brush. I don't know if it's meant to be used like with what, but I personally use it on nose contour. I really don't do it that often. Today I tried it because I wanted to remember how this works and I think it works like fine. The shape is something that, you know, it's good to do nose contour. For me it is just something I don't really like to do. My nose is kind of big and I feel like no matter if I contour or not it will look big and if I contour there will only be more attention in my nose. So yes, that's why I don't do it often, but I do think this is a nice contour brush for nose. Then I do have here one eye brush. So this is their eyeshadow C brush. This is really nice brush in my opinion. This is something you can use like all over your lid if you want to use just like a one lid color. It is quite big. So if you want to do a precise work, it may be too big, but for example, today I did use this brush and I also like to use this with brow bone highlight because the shape is so perfect. Okay, then let's move to the face products. So I'm going to talk, uh, talk about them just in order I would put them on. So I do have two primers from e.l.f. and the first one is their mineral infused face primer. This is probably like the fifth puddle that I have used. I really love e.l.f mineral infused face primer. It is that type of primer that goes with every foundation. It makes my skin so smooth, so silky feeling. It is a silicone based primer. So I know it's something that you either like or you really, really hate it. I love silicone based primers because they make my skin so smooth and silky and they really feel in pores. This is very nice. It's like this clear gel like primer very very silicone -y. so smoothing I just love it the one thing you have to notice with these elf primers is that you don't get that much product so you get about half ounce I really like this pump system it goes like all up so you actually do get all of the product out but yes it is not that much product but the primer is still affordable I just don't like it necessary when the Packaging makes you think that there is a lot of product when there is actually not. Then I do have their Blemish Control Face Primer. And this primer is like this white, white lotion-y type of primer. It is all right. And why it is Blemish Control is that it contains salicylic acid. So for me, salicylic acid is definitely something that helps with breakouts probably more than anything else I have tried. However, I don't think I will be trying this primer again or buying a new one. I rather buy some skincare item that contains this salicylic acid because I don't want to then, you know, put this primer all over my face if I have only breakout at some point. Then I'm going to move to their foundations. First I want to talk a little bit about their shade ranges. So they are quite bad. They are not like the worst ever and even though they do have quite 
few shades. They do still have like lighter and deeper shades, but they definitely could do better job with their shades. Actually, they have lately expanded shade ranges with this foundation that I will soon talk about. But overall, their like foundation and concealer shade selection sucks and I hope they do it better in the future. So the next product I'm going to talk about is like my favorite e.l.f. product ever. If I could only have one e.l.f. product, this would be it. This is the best. I love it. And also, if you have watched my videos when I did them in Finnish, you know I love this foundation. So this is the e.l.f. Acne Fighting Foundation. This is so freaking good. This also contains salicylic acid. So this may be a little bit drying. So if you do have dry skin, uh, I really don't recommend this to you. But if you do have dry skin and no problem with breakouts, it really wouldn't make any sense to buy an acne fighting foundation. Because if I think about an acne fighting foundation, I think something that is like long lasting and high coverage. And it is exactly what it is. This is the best foundation ever. It is so, so full coverage foundation and it lasts all day on my skin. I just love it and I really think it helps with breakouts. That is why I don't use it if my skin is on good condition and today I do have some breakouts in my forehead but still I didn't want to use it. Or actually I'm not using it currently because I'm afraid that they are discounting this. The shades have been out of stock forever and I have almost run out of my porcelain shade so I just want to save it and spare it to special occasions. I must say that now that I am at my palest, this shade porcelain, which I'm not sure if it's their lightest or second lightest shade, so it's a little bit too deep for me, but it's not problem for me to mix a little bit whitening drops. Especially because this is so high coverage, the coverage really doesn't go anywhere even if I mix some whitening drops here. So yes, this is the best foundation. It's so long lasting, so full coverage. I just absolutely love it. It's the best. Another foundation from e.l.f. which I already showed you is this Flawless Finish Foundation. So this is like a medium coverage foundation that has SPF 15. The one problem I have with this one is that it doesn't really last on my skin very well. So if you do get oily, this probably won't be your choice. I do notice that this one doesn't stay that good on, on my T-zone. But other wear, it looks beautiful and it looks beautiful after application. I actually do have this foundation on today. So I do have this in shade porcelain. I think this is called natural nowadays. But I do have mixed in some the Body Shop lightning drops. Also one foundation from them that I don't have anymore and I would not recommend to anybody is their moisturizing foundation stick. This is actually quite funny because Emily Noel was talking about this and as I said I buy a lot of stuff because she recommends it but her skin type is different from mine so I do have oily compo skin and she does have like quite normal skin I believe. The moisturizing foundation stick is I don't know why it's called moisturizing because for me it is just very dry and cakey looking. No matter how I try to apply it or get it to work or whatever, it just looks so cakey and dry and uh, no. The only good thing I can think about that foundation is that it's actually quite decent coverage. It is like medium coverage, I would say. I like the coverage. I like... Well, I don't like anything else. I don't like the finish. It is cakey and waxy looking after application and it goes very cakey and dry looking when it has been on longer time. So don't recommend that. Then I want to talk about a couple of their concealers. But this first concealer I'm going to talk about is actually something I don't have anymore. So it is their under eye concealer and highlighter. This does have two sides, a liquid highlighter and concealer. I did use up the concealer, but not the highlighter. But the concealer was just so bad. If you're marketing something as an under eye concealer, I think it should cover up at least anything. But this one 
it was so sheer. It was like kind of like this luminous finish concealer. So I did use it in my forehead, nose and chin area. But under eye, it did absolutely nothing. Then I do have here the HT concealer. I really don't know if it's good or not because the sage selection is such a shit. Like their foundations. This is a little bit too dark for me, but it's no problem to mix in some lightning drops, but this is just so weird. This is shade fair. They also have shade light and medium, so there is not even a deep shade. But this fair shade, um, as you see, it is way deeper than my skin tone. This is my skin color when I am tan, but still under my eyes I would like something lighter than my skin tone. I really don't know if it's good or not because I can't get this one to work at all. The next thing I'm going to talk about is their HD powder. So this is this sheer white translucent finishing powder. This one is a very finely melt silica powder. I really love these kind of powders. They make your skin so smooth. This one is good and this one is affordable. However, the next one, the next HD powder is much better in my opinion. A much smaller amount of that does actually make your skin so so smooth so i think that one is better than this but this is good also i have nothing bad to say i just prefer the next one then i have here one of their blush bronzer duos i know this had some weird name some like contouring blush and bronzing powder or something else like that so i have the shade fishy matte i also did have the shade saint lucia i know that one is so many people's favorite but i don't know why because I don't think that was so good. The blush had huge glitter chunks. This one, on the other hand, I think is really, really beautiful. It looks deeper in the pan than in the cheeks. In my opinion, it is kind of like peachy, salmony, pinky shade. And this bronzer is so beautiful. I do have it today on my forehead and also on my cheeks, but on my forehead, I haven't lately been contouring at all. I just used bronzer there, so today I used this. The only problem that I have with this kind of products is that I forget to use either one. Now I do start this with my bronzers, so I remember to use actually the bronzer, but I previously start this with my blushes, and then I never remember to use the bronzers. And then the other blush I have from them is their Baked Blush in Rich Rose. My packaging is unfortunately broken, this come in a quite bad packaging, but I have traveled it, it a lot, so that may also be a reason why it's broken. I do have this blush on today, so it is this like rosy, brownish, reddish type of thing. It has beautiful sheen in it. These are not the most pigmented thing ever. I did actually also have the peachy cheeky one. I did not like that because it was so unpigmented. I just couldn't get the blush to show. And I do have peachy shimmery blushes that are very beautiful without packing on like crazy, like the Milani Luminoso. This one I do not have to pack on that much because the color is deeper, but it's just so beautiful. I love this kind of neutral blushes and this gives so beautiful sheen to your face. I just love, I love how it looks today with this red lipstick. Okay, so I do have here one of their eyebrow products. So this is their Instant Lift Brow Pencil. This is from their more affordable line and this one is a stunning product. Oh my god. It's only two dollars. I have done my brows with it today. So it is this like pen. This is not as thin as Browis or NYX Micro Brow, but it is thin enough and it is so creamy, so quick, so amazing product. The only thing I must say in this one is when I scroll this down, I think I have used quite much product already, even though I haven't been using it very long time so i think this is something you have to repurchase often it is only two dollars so it's not a lot of money but if you live in finland it's not that easy to get so that may be something you want to think but other thing in this one is the shade selection so they only do have three shades this one the slightest is okay for me it is tiniest bit more yellow but i 
prefer, but it's not too yellow. Okay, so I do have here three of their eyeshadow palettes. Two of them I really like and one I don't like. So let's start with those that I actually do like. I have both of them on my eyes today. So the first one is their Matte for Matte eyeshadow palette. They have a whole line of these palettes, but I do only have this original one. And as you can see, I have hit pan here. I really like this palette because it's actually quite versatile. So there is very different mattes. There is like this warm neutral shades and there is some cooler shades also. Because it is so versatile and because it is so compact and lightweight, I do like to take it with me when I travel. So it is good for that. And because it's so affordable, I really don't have to worry if I break it. Because I'm more likely to break my makeup when I travel. The quality of these shadows is really nice. They are not the best mattes ever out there. But for this price tag, they are worth it in my opinion. This is something I would call beginner friendly because they are not that pigmented that you have difficulties with blending them. They are very blendable and they are something that you maybe have to build up just a little bit but you can build them up. Some shadows that are not pigmented are just patchy when you try to build them but these are actually very beginner friendly. You can build them up but you don't get insane pigment where you cannot blend it out. Would I recommend this to somebody who is professional with makeup? No, but would I recommend this to a beginner that wants to find a nice affordable matte eyeshadow palette? Yes, but as I said in one Finnish online store, this is 30 euros. Is it worth it? Absolutely not. Save your money girl and buy something else with 30 euros, but with 10 dollars that is definitely worth the money. Another eyeshadow palette I really love and today I do have this palette on my uh, lid and also as my brow bone and inner corner highlight is the Prism eyeshadow palette in Naked and they do also have different shades. I really would like to get the Sunset one. I think that was like the first Sunset palette ever. Tank became Natasha Denona and all of these other brands and were like we invented the Sunset but no it was Elf. But this palette is very nice. It is this six pan eyeshadow palette, only shimmery shades. These are something that I would also call beginner friendly. If you are a true makeup lover, if you are a makeup artist, you probably have seen a lot better foiled eyeshadows because the quality that these brands put out there is just phenomenal. Like let's say Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows. No, these are not that good quality, but to beginner who wants to get to makeup, I really would recommend this. It's a beautiful palette. You can get beautiful looks with this. Today I have used it. I love my eyeshadow look. I think it's so pretty. Then there is this one eyeshadow palette that I do not like. I do not recommend. This is their Neutral Gold eyeshadow palette. <sighs> I did have this palette in my weekly makeup basket a couple of weeks back and I did use this four times in that week. Three times I used only this palette, one time I used this and the matte for matte. I actually used in that look these pinky shades here and I used the matte for matte palette. So that was the only look I was happy with. All the looks I did with only this palette I was really really unhappy with. I don't think the quality is up there. The mattes are good. The mattes are the same good quality than in matte for matte in my opinion, but the shimmers are just, they are not that good. The satin shades are alright. I have used better satins, but they are not like bad. But like this shimmery glittery pink, it's this shimmery hot mess that you try to pack on and nothing actually shows up. In my opinion, this is not worth it. So it is ten dollars. You can get like a Colourpop eyeshadow palette that is super of good quality in sixteen dollars. It is so much better investment than something like this. Okay, then I have their Precious Liquid Eyeliner. So this one I bought because I was searching for a tube for NYX. Matte liquid eyeliner. They both have this tiny brush tip applicator that is so so good. This is okay eyeliner, like it is long lasting. I don't find any smudging or anything with this one. The only problem is 
why I won't buy this anymore and why I will be buying the NYX one in future is this one doesn't dry matte so it actually stays on like kind of like shiny looking. I did line my eyes with this today and you can do very precise beautiful looks with this one and I actually love how it turned out but when I want to do a more bold look I want it to be like matte. Then I have here just a couple of e.l.f. lip products. I haven't really tried much of their lip products. These are the only ones. I definitely want to try some of their lip stuff. So one of my holy grail products from e.l.f. is their lip exfoliator. I have just the original one here. This is so good. I don't want that kind of lip exfoliator what is in char because when you put your finger in there then the lip exfoliator is all under your nail and I think that's disgusting. I prefer both of my lip liners and lip balms to be in a lipstick form. So this is so handy, you can just scrub your lips. I like to do it before doing makeup and then I put some lip balm on. And finally I do have here one lipstick from e.l.f. So this is their matte lip color. I have this in shade Coral. I also had the shade Tea Rose but I didn't like it because it was like that a dusty, almost greyish type of rosy color and that made me look like a ghost. But this coral shade is nice. I did wear only this in my latest empties video if you want to see how this looks when it's on. Usually I like more bold lipstick and even if I'm doing nude I don't like to wear something that is matte. I think like if I want to put on a nude I want there to be shine so there is at least some life in it because I think matte nudes makes me look like flat. This is a pretty shade but not my personal preference. The formula is also not my personal preference. There is so amazing matte lipsticks nowadays. One of my favorite formulas is the Colourpop Matte Axe lipstick but this elf one the problem I have with this one is that it's very heavy. It is very matte but it feels heavy and it goes like ugly and crumply. I cannot really reapply it. If I eat and I wanna touch up, I do have to take everything off because otherwise it looks so crumply and ugly. I really wouldn't recommend this Colourpop Matte Axe if you want to find something affordable. That is great one. Okay, so these were all of my e.l.f. products reviewed. Tell me down in the comments what is your favorite e.l.f. product so I may try it if I haven't already. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please put thumbs up. And see you in my next video. Bye bye!